session coming your way you know this is the second session for this new year and i'm so glad that you know we can do this together thank god for how far he has brought us i know last uh week was exciting we had opportunity of appreciating you know a couple of people and you i believe by now you have also you would have also gone to you know appreciate one or two people in your life and i know it's a good feeling you know hallelujah and so i believe god is going to do something awesome for you and i welcome to faith credible our weekly devotional let's share a word of prayer father we thank you we are grateful to you we thank you for everything you have done in our lives what can we render unto you constantly we come before you just as we are all that we are all that we have it is all because of you we give you praise have your will lord help us to understand your word by the power of your holy spirit in jesus name amen today we'll be looking at gratitude 2 part 2 of the gratitude we started a team on gratitude so we'll be looking at the second part of it our anchor scripture is hebrews chapter 13 15 to 16 the ESV version says through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifice are pleasing to God hallelujah Remember in our first session we started by looking at gratitude in general. Now we want to look at some few specific things and uh um gratitude this week. Uh the first thing we want to look at is how do we show gratitude? It's it's necessary. There are somebody who want to show gratitude but you just don't know how to show that gratitude. Hallelujah. So I think it is just necessary that we mention a few ways that you can show gratitude. you know to people remember we said gratitude actually means being thankful it is an act of expressing your appreciation to people who have been of of good or who have done one good or the other to you hallelujah how do we show gratitude hallelujah you know it is very necessary that we understand how we can show gratitude many people want to show gratitude but they don't know how to Hallelujah. So let's just look at a couple of the pointers on how to show gratitude. Number 1, gratitude should first be a heart issue. When it's from the heart, it can't be faked. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you are first of all, you know, appreciating somebody from your heart, you can't fake it. That is why some 9 verse 1 says I will give thanks to the Lord with all my heart. Hallelujah. When you appreciate people from the heart, it is easy to acknowledge. People will know without being told. They will feel it that you are actually grateful for what they have done for you. So, the first point in your being to show gratitude is that it should start from your heart. Hallelujah. Number 2, we express gratitude by telling others of what we have received. This is called testimony. Sharing your testimony or your praise report. Hallelujah. In fact, God encourages us to share our testimony. That is how we are able to overcome the enemy. Testimony is a powerful tool in encouraging other people. And not just that, we overcome the enemy when we share our testimony and ultimately we give glory to God. So when you receive from people at certain point or when um the situation demands, it is just good that you you appreciate them by sharing the testimony of how they have been of help to you, especially in our church setting where we call for testimonies and all that we use it to encourage one another be a person that shares your testimony don't sit on the blessings of god it's not by your own strength you know it is the message of god hallelujah now 
The same Psalm 9, verse 1, the B part of it said, I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will tell of the wonderful things that the Lord has done for me. Again, Psalm 35, verse 18 says, Then I will thank you in front of the great assembly. I will praise you before all the people. So you realize that it is a requirement. It is something that is good when we share the testimony of how we have been blessed. Like I mentioned earlier, it encourages others. It helps you to overcome the enemy and it brings glory to God. Number three way to show gratitude is by giving praise and thanksgiving. By giving praise and thanksgiving. Let's look at God's word in Ezra. Ezra chapter 3 verse 11. And it says, With praise and thanks, they sang this song to the Lord. He is so good. His faithful love for Israel endures forever. Then all the people gave a great shout, praising the Lord because the foundation of the Lord's temple had been laid. So when we praise, praise itself is lifting. Hallelujah. It means you are lifting God or you are lifting the person. And I don't see anybody that will be lifted and the person will refuse to be lifted. <laughs> Amen. Not, you know, to exaggerate, you know, that kind of, no. But genuinely, you are lifting praises to God. You are praising God for what he has done for you is a sign of gratitude. Hallelujah. Now, another way we can show gratitude is by giving gifts. By giving gifts. That is what we just read. The Bible actually calls it sacrifice. Let's repeat that scripture in Hebrews chapter 13, uh, 15 to 16. And it says, Through him then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Bible calls a sacrifice. Hallelujah. When you take your gift to appreciate people for what they have done for you. Of course, your gift might not be equal to what they have done for you anyway. But just the level that you used to appreciate is enough. Some people might not have, you know, sold material things into your life. They might have sold immaterial things into your life. They might have been there for you when you needed somebody to be there for you. It is just good that you appreciate them with your gift. Number five, by changing negative behavioral patterns to a positive one. Especially when an offense has been forgiven. The best gift you can give to somebody is for you to show a change in behavior. It's not the money you give to the person. It's not the gift you give to the person. They only want you to change the character, the negative character that in the first place brought you to that situation. So yes, when we change our behavior in a positive light, in a positive way, it is enough appreciation. Hallelujah. And number six is also by helping others with the same help that we have received. Amen. You might, I think and I believe everybody has something to offer. It might not be as much as you have received, but there are some people who are still below you that might just need a little of what you have. Look at what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. And it said, He comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort others when they are troubled. We will be able to give them the same comfort as. Amen. The same that we have been comforted with. Hallelujah. So in your little way, be a blessing to other people. And finally, number seven, by praying for our benefactors. Those who bless us. They might not need what we have, but they need our prayers. Hallelujah. 
those who have been of blessing to us in one way they have prayed for us they have stood with us they have helped us out of messy situations you can't do much for them all that you can do is lift your voice unto heaven and say lord also meet them at their point of need hallelujah now child of god what attitude do we have that destroy gratitude there are certain attitude that we possess that do not argue well for that person that want to show gratitude the first attitude that is no good or that destroys gratitude is when you have an entitlement mentality <laughs> Hallelujah. It is very difficult for you to show gratitude when you feel entitled to the blessing. When you think that this is what you deserve. You can't have a heart of gratitude. Now, you that you are thinking this is what you deserve. Ask yourself, why haven't you been able to achieve it all this while? Hallelujah. So, don't have an entitlement mentality, it will deprive you of a heart of gratitude. Amen. Number two, when you think or you assume it is your benefactor's duty to help you because you think they can afford it. This is something that is very negative. When we think that because people can afford it, they must automatically bless us. They must automatically be of help to us. And when they don't do, that makes them evil. That is a lie. Amen. Now, I used to tell people, nobody owes you anything. Nobody owes you anything. So when you think that they are not blessing you, they are not helping you, they can, they can afford it and they are not helping you and, and, and they are evil. No, 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 no. No, every man have their given assignment. Hallelujah. And indeed, when you understand that the true source of all help is God, then you can concentrate your energy in, in going to God to be your source. Of course, God is going to use men to bless you. But don't you ever think that because your benefactors can help you, they are or they must help you. And when you don't or when you have this kind of attitude, you are bound to be disappointed. Hallelujah. Because they are men. They are men. Most often, what you think they are seeing, they are not even seeing it. They may not even notice. They will see you and in their mind, they are also thinking about other things. So don't have that mentality. I said, because your benefactor can afford it, then they must help you. No, it's not a right attitude. Number three, when you are boastful, when you are boastful, it's a wrong attitude that destroys gratitude. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 4 verse 7 says, For who sees anything different in you? What do you have that you did not receive? If then you received, why do you boast as if you did not receive it? Hallelujah. Amen. Now, <laughs> I don't understand why you will receive and you will still be very boastful about it. It is an attitude that destroys gratitude. Number four, being a complainer and complaining of what you have received is something that destroys gratitude. Exodus chapter 16, and in fact, I want to encourage you to read the whole of Exodus chapter 16. But let's just see verse 3, what is it? it said, if only the Lord had killed us back in Egypt, the morn, there we sat around pots filled with meat and ate all the bread we wanted. But now you have brought us into this wilderness to starve us all to death. This is the people of Israel. They were complaining to Moses when they were hungry. And they are saying, you should have left us when we were slaves, when we were suffering. Why did you at least over there we can eat pot filled with meat and all kinds of things? Can you imagine? A generation that was delivered from slavery. 
And mind you, they are being delivered also signified that their own children are not going to be slaves. They are not considering what has been done for them. All they are seeing is the immediate need that is not being satisfied. How many times have you disregarded the blessings and the things that people have done for you in the past and just for one thing that they didn't do for you? You have hated them, you have insulted them, you have uh, 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 made a mess of them, gossiped about them, and did all kinds of things. That is an attitude of ungratefulness. When you needed it most, when nobody was there to rescue you, those people were there. If today they are not helping you, it is not an offense. So we should know how the attitude of a complaining, complaining, complaining. No. Hallelujah. It is a wrong attitude. Those who complain are never satisfied. Hallelujah. They are never satisfied and they are always greedy for more. Hallelujah. They are never satisfied. Now point five, don't be greedy and imagine that you should have more than you were given. <laughs> In fact, many people that usually are constantly receiving always feel that they can be given more. And when they don't receive it, they are greedy. Hallelujah. And they look at the people who are blessing them. Oh, they can afford this. They are spending this. They are doing this. Why can't they give me just a bit of that? It is not yours to start with. Hallelujah. It is never yours to start with. It has never been. So if they decide to bless you, that is their choice. Don't be greedy. Don't be greedy. Hallelujah. Don't be greedy. Whatever thing you receive, appreciate it and be thankful. Number six, don't belittle the help people give to you. Be content. I say it again. Don't belittle the help that people give to you. Be content. Hallelujah. Now let's read 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 8. It says, Yet true godliness with contentment is itself great wealth. After all, we brought nothing with us when we came into the world, and we can't take anything with us when we leave it. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In fact, for some, it is a huge sacrifice even when they don't look like it. They might look okay. They might look wealthy. They might even, it might even appear that they have it. They might not have it at that immediate moment. So whatever they give to you might actually be the last they have. Be content. Be content. Hallelujah. And finally, don't pay back evil for good. When people help you and you go and stab them in the back, you are paying back evil for good. When people help you and you can't stand in defense of that help, hallelujah, you are paying back good. When people help you and you sit and you criticize and you kill them behind their back, you are paying evil for good. Proverbs 17 verse 7 has a word of caution for you. He said, if you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. Amen. It's a word of caution. Several people have been blessed. They have been hurt. They turn around and hurt the people that really, really help them. All they care is their interest. All they care. Beloved, you are being selfish. When you turn around and you kill those that have gone out of their way to help you. Remember when nobody was able to help you. Nobody thought that you deserved it. But they stood and they helped you. Now, you find it very, very exciting to work against them. Stab them at the back. Say all kinds of things against them. This is a word of caution for you. It says, if you repay good with evil, evil will never leave your house. May 
God help us. May we never pay back uh, evil for the good that we have received. Hallelujah. Now, question for the day. Mention three ways we can show gratitude. Action point. Call, test, email, or even go to someone that has impacted your life positively, whether in cash or in kind. Let them know you are grateful. Call them, test them, email them, or just visit and say thank you. Send a card that says thank you. I appreciate what you did for me. Don't send a general thing. Go personally and appreciate them. Amen. Uh, Fair declaration for this week. With all my heart, I praise the Lord. Oh Lord, help me not to be ungrateful. Constantly let me have a heart of thanksgiving, especially this week and this month. Amen. Now, our prayer points for this week. Prayer point one. Pray that God will remove every stony heart of ungratefulness from you and replace it with a grateful and thankful heart. Number two, pray and ask the Holy Spirit to help you resolve every conflict you are facing as a result of ingratitude. Number three, declare, Lord, make me a better person in this new year. Make me wise and humble. Open doors of expression for my talent and gifts in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Bible reading for this week, day one, Hebrews chapter 13, 15 to 16. Day two, James 1, 17 and 2 Corinthians 4, 15. Day three, 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Day four, Exodus 16. Day five, 1 Timothy 6, 6 to 8. And Proverbs 17, 13. Day 6, 1 Chronicles 16, 34. And 2 Corinthians 9, 15. And finally, day 7, 1 Samuel 12, 24. And Psalm 9, verse 1. Let's share a word of prayer. Lord, even as we have seen and heard ways that we can be, uh, or ways that we can show gratitude to others, help us to be able to do them. Above all, every attitude that makes us not to be uh, grateful, that shows us to have ugly characters of ingratitude, help us to hurt them today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Beloved, it's been an exciting time. Next week, you are going to be blessed again. Now, until I come your way again, remember, this has been Faith Credo. God bless you. Amen. Reverend Julia is a counselor, children's church minister, conference speaker, and a teacher of God's word, grace with a healing anointing. For bookings and updates on her messages, devotionals, and related events, please call 055-081-2255 or 020-77582227 or send an email at rev.juliaoju at gmail.com. Like and follow her social media handles on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram at Rev Julia Oji. So she comes your way again with another session of the Faith Cradle. Stay strong and favored. God bless you. Connect with Apostle Freddie and Julia Oji for a heavenly experience of glory with a host of other believers at the Miracle Revival Chapel International. Friend, join any of our services on the days on your screen. A divine encounter awaits you. God bless you.